Hey everybody, back in boats. This one's in the Awaki Alpha. I'm platooned up with Solish and the Kuma. These two ships go pretty well together. They're very similar. Uh, the Awaki's got a little bit less in terms of gunfire power, but the torpedoes are a bit um, better laid out. Although the torpedo tubes along the sides of the ship layout is very handy on destroyers because you can snake around so quickly. Uh, these cruisers do not have the agility of their smaller cousins. And so you do bleed quite a bit of speed in the turn, as you can see when I'm driving my Iwaki around. Now this match is a good sort of demonstration of just how far blind luck can get you. I should have died many, many times over in this match. I was not paying attention to what I was doing. I wasn't thinking. I was just blundering around in the most pubby of fashions. Um, I probably could have rolled my face across my keyboard and played more effectively than what I did, but somehow I was allowed to get away with it. First order of business is to try and set the St. Louis on fire before he sets me on fire. The St. Louis has a lot of guns, which makes it very intimidating to the Iwaki, a ship that cannot survive hits. The other problem is that because the St. Louis does have so many goddamn guns, it can just walk its fire onto you. Uh, even if the puppy driving it is a terrible shot, they will eventually find their mark, and when they do, it's just going to be a never-ending wall of lead. This is much the same thing as what you get with the Atlanta at higher tiers, although the Atlanta isn't quite so effective at doing uh, the same thing to same tier cruisers. It can't really citadel hit same tier cruisers, it can only set them on fire. Anyway, I am now covered from the St. Louis by islands, but it looks like the enemy Kuma wants some. Now, he's giving me some bad angles at first, so I stick with the HE. At this point, I should have switched to AP, but I was just so absent-minded during the course of this match, it didn't occur to me until he'd already given me another bad angle. You can see him turning there, and finally I make the switch. Of course, at the angle he's now giving me, AP is useless. It's just going to bounce off his side without even really damaging him. But that's okay because I'm going to switch my attention to something else. I start firing off torps along the path I expect this enemy Kawachi to take. You can see there, maybe, um, that he's turning. So I fired one spread roughly at where he was going in case he pulled out of the turn, and another further ahead where I expected him to come out of the turn. There's also a South Carolina behind him. Now, the South Carolina doesn't have any survivability against battleships, but against a cruiser it is actually quite scary. And so I'm dodging for dear life here as these three fire on me. I'm also somewhat exposed on my left. Thankfully, the guys over there were not paying attention. Here you can see the enemy Phoenix doing what is typical of pubbies in low tier matches and reversing in open water. But at least he's not doing what I'm doing, which is running aground in front of four or five enemy ships, which are all trying to kill me. Thankfully, the Iwaki does have a smoke generator, and so I pop smoke and reverse into it. Of course, I am keeping myself lit, kind of, by firing my guns, um, but if you do pull far enough back into a smoke screen, you can fire without being spotted, even in a battleship. Speaking of battleships, this enemy Kawachi is frankly terrible. He's giving me all the time in the world to shoot him. He could have been across that channel by now if he'd actually been not trying to weave like an idiot. There's not much point trying to juke rapid fire shells in a battleship. You might be able to juke other battleships, but not a cruiser, particularly not at this range. So he goes down, finished off by Solish, who has been watching my incredible bout of luck from slightly behind, and here we come across a completely distracted Miyogi, who is sitting still. I really just don't know what's wrong with puppies in this game. They don't seem to understand that these are warships, not tanks. You can't side scrape or peek and poke or sit in the open. It just doesn't work. Anyway, once he finally realizes he's being charged by a cruiser, he starts to move and turn towards me. Now, I can tell what he's doing. He's trying to unmask his guns and get a full broadside on me. At this range, he's probably not going to miss, and it's probably going to kill me. But I know that he's now committed to that turn. This is the best time to torpedo a battleship when it's already got its rudder locked hard over in one position. The reason for this is that the rudder shift takes twice as long 
to get into any effective um, condition for dodging. The best way to evade torpedoes is to try and turn into them, and because he was already turning to his left, um, he would have had to completely reverse his turn to turn into my torps there. So I waited until he was well and truly committed before firing, and it worked out. He got absolutely shit upon. Now, the St. Louis is going to be a problem for the reasons I outlined earlier. He is getting focused by myself and some of my teammates. I think Solish was putting some shots into him as well from behind. But he's quite tough. The St. Louis is a bit of an outlier when it comes to cruisers, particularly at the low tiers. Uh, it's very, very, very well armored and it's exceptionally hard to citadel. The only time I've citadel to St. Louis was in a battleship with plunging fire from a distance. Now, I know you can citadel them with uh, tier 5 cruisers once you start getting up into, you know, 5 and 6 inch gun territory, but, oh, sorry, not 5 inch, um, yeah, 6 inch gun territory, but it's not really that common in my experience. Um, they are very difficult to really citadel effectively. They're very hardy little ships. They're very slow, of course, which is the payoff, but they're difficult to kill. Thankfully for me, he goes down just before he can finish me off, and I did uh, probably misplay quite badly there by firing those torps at the Langley instead of trying to fire at the St. Louis. I think my rationale at this point was that St. Louis has a pretty good turn radius, um, and he would have seen them coming. He would have known that they were aimed at him, and so he probably would have dodged them. And so I figured it was better to take the Hail Mary shot at the Langley, which worked, as you can see, uh, than to chance wasting a full spread on St. Louis. Now, I could have fired one spread at both, but I guess that didn't occur to me at the time. Unfortunately for me, the Langley has been setting up a torp run on me while I was occupied trying to kill him. And one torp manages to just wing the side of my ship and is able to kill me. Such is life. But it's pretty much over for the enemy team. They've only got two battleships, two cruisers left. And now I switch to spectating Solish. And you can see the Kuma in action here. Like I said, it's very similar to the Iwaki. It looks very similar, it plays very similarly, it's better in the gun department, slightly worse in the torpedo department. And it, of course, doesn't get a smoke screen like the Iwaki does, but in pretty much every other respect, it's very, very similar. Uh, it does have an aircraft catapult there, you can see on the stern. It doesn't get a scout aircraft though, so it's just there for cosmetics. Um, reason being that, well actually, I don't know what the reason is. I'm, I'm sure there is one, but it doesn't get a scout aircraft despite having a So there you go. Um, with that said, there are a number of US battleships that historically had catapult fighters that do not get any aircraft in this either. So I think Wargaming just kind of used it as a balance factor. It's pretty much all over for these guys. We're capping out their base and their last few guys are in no position to do anything about it. A nice 